Look at that. Good job. You're a YouTuber now. Hello friends and newcomers. There has been a lovely little spike in my channel subscription since Vlogmas. I appreciate you guys deciding to subscribe. That is absolutely amazing. I happened to click on my YouTube channel on Christmas Eve and was blessed to see an exact number of 30,000 subscribers. It was an early Christmas present. I appreciate it so much. But welcome. Welcome if you're new here. I am Cory and I do lifestyle type of videos. I delve into the beauty world every now and again. I like to do things based off music and my own personal taste. If you're a weirdo like me, then come along down and we'll have a whole lot of fun together. I'm doing a Q&A today. A long time ago, if you scroll way back in my Instagram, I asked you guys to leave some comments, questions, and of course, of course, you guys did. You guys always surprise me with how thoughtful and interesting your questions are. I'm so excited to delve into these, so let's just get to it. Victoria Linoleum asks, what is your favorite band and favorite album? These types of questions are so hard to answer because that kind of changes up every couple months, as most people do. However, there is one band that's been a constant throughout the past couple years of my life. That band is The Rebel Spell. This band I hold near and dear to my heart because a lot of the lyrics and the ethics that they have as a band translate into my ethics, so I'm always inspired by this band. No matter how many times I can listen to these records, they never get old. I'd have to say my favorite to rotate lately is Four Songs About Freedom because those ones really hit home and I love them a lot. It's really good to just jump into that album in particular if you've never even heard of them because it's only four songs. You don't have to really commit to much, but I absolutely love every piece of music they've ever created. Another specific album from them that I absolutely adore is their last studio album, Last Run. Unfortunately, the lead singer passed away a couple of years ago, so I'm telling you about a dead band, which is kind of rude. Alas, the music will always be here for us to enjoy. They're definitely my number one. Emily Elizabeth asks, if you could change anything about the world, what would it be and why? To be completely honest, and hopefully not to scare too many of you guys away, I would have to change how rules are gone about in the animal agriculture realm. It's very ugly back there, it's, it's ugly behind closed doors, it's just an ugly, ugly, ugly practice. And honestly, having insight into it just changes your whole world, and it seems to be the only thing that we can think about lately. But the damage it's doing is literally unfixable. To be just completely short and blunt with you, I do believe that the fields that we use in order to graze cows could be used for better means. Rat Trap asks, what is your favorite band that you've seen live? Also, what are some good Canadian bands? Oh man, this is a incredibly hard question because I've seen hundreds and hundreds of bands and most of the bands that have been on my bucket list. Thanks to my amazing mother, I was able to go to a lot, lot, lot of concerts. As a child, I've seen pretty much every classic rock band that's still touring. Honestly, a favorite is so hard to pick. Each show brings something different. I really, really like the smaller, intimate shows that I've seen with bands way more than any stadium show that I've ever been to because you can just connect with the musicians more. However, I have attended some fantastic, fantastic stadium shows like um, Roger Waters. Just recently, this past summer, I got to see Guns N' Roses finally as one band. Blew my mind. <laughs> Above all else, I think I have to hold really near and dear to my heart the one time that I was able to see Motorhead before the band just died. What? 
I'm really thankful for that. They were touring with Megadeth, which I have seen a few times before, but seeing Motorhead live was astounding. Really marks something for me in history. I have a special Motorhead shirt that actually has Canada written underneath instead of England, which I think is just a one-of-a-kind piece and I really have to stop wearing it. I need to like hang it on my wall, otherwise I'm going to disintegrate it because I wear it so much. But it's just so special to me. It's something that I don't think many people have and it's not really something that I'm ever going to get again. So. If I had to narrow it down to one show in particular that just kind of changed my life, it would probably be Motorhead. Simon Widow Poet asks, what is your dream super band lineup? Can be living or deceased? I have been thinking about this question since you asked it, and it is so hard. It is so much harder than I ever could have thought. The thing about it is, is that a lot of the bands that I listen to are so vastly different from one another. It amazes me sometimes. If you were to listen to a playlist of just songs from the bands that I listen to on the regular, none of their music is alike. I'm so sorry if that was the lamest answer I could have ever given you, but I'm racking my brain and I just can't figure it out. Piss Baby asks, what's your favorite Johnny Hobo song? It is so hard to narrow them down because every single one holds a really big, deep cut in my heart, but I think it would have to be Harmony Parking Lot or as free as the rent we don't pay. Just hit a soft spot for me. <sighs> Man, it's so weird to think that the happiest times in my life were filled with the most depressing music. So I really think it helps people through a really hard time and it makes people a little more aware of everybody's different struggles and everybody's different lives. So I still absolutely love, love, love Johnny Hobo songs and they just shoot me right back. But those are two of my top favorites for sure. Curly Camco asks, do you want to get married and have kids one day? For a really, really, really long time, I had no intentions whatsoever to have kids at all. <laughs> I was very, very against the idea. No way in hell am I procreating in this world. When I met Justin and his undying urge to be a father, he kind of swayed me a little bit. I feel like eventually We'll find a time and a place for that, but for now, <laughs> yeah right, I'm only just screwing my own head on right, so uh, I wish that adoption was easier because I would probably take that route. I definitely see the overpopulation problems and that's a big reason why I don't want to, but at the same time, there's this sickening part of me that's just curious to see how something created out of Justin and I would turn out. You know what I mean? As far as marriage goes, definitely. I feel like it'll be more so a big, fat, fun, well-decorated party and less so legally binding style. Who really knows? We're not too sure. I mean, we're been together for nearly five years and it doesn't really seem like something that's a necessity. We already live like we're married. Well, we live like a married couple should live. We don't live like a typical unhappy married couple, which is pretty much what 90% of entertainment shows you. But no, we live like a loving, happy, married life anyways. So right now, with the paperwork and the thousands and thousands dollars worth of party, maybe not. I think it would be fun to have a really big raging party with all of our friends, a lot of booze, bands, music, and it would be really, really cool to look fabulous and to get some sick photos together. That would be great. But the rest just seems kind of fishy to me. Speckled K asks, what is your dream job slash major aspiration? The dream 
right now for me is to whisk away to Vancouver, live my best life where it rains all the time. That sounds fantastic. I really want to attend the John Casablanca Institute, which is a makeup school downtown of Vancouver. A handful of my friends have done the course as well as a ton of my biggest inspirations on Instagram. So I just kind of want to get that under my belt. I want to actually know what I'm doing. I've really only done makeup on myself and a very few handful of friends and I just really crave the knowledge to know how to do it on everyone. I really want to go through the special effects course and potentially end up in film one way or another. I just think it would be so rad to see my name in the credits under some sort of makeup artistry. With enough training, I would be able to have the confidence in order to do the craft and do it well and do it right. So honestly, for now, five year plan is get the heck over to Vancouver, uh, finally and actually do this course that I've been dreaming about for like six or seven years now. I Am Madness asks, are you planning to come to Montreal or doing a meet and greet in Canada? For now, I don't have any plans for a meet and greet. I'm still such a baby, baby, baby influencer on the internet that I feel like barely one person would even come if I tried to do something like that. I think it would be an embarrassment. <laughs> I feel like I need to gain a little bit more traction and have a little bit more interest in something like that. As far as coming to Montreal, I do want to attend the Bleak Life Festival over in, I think it's in Toronto? I think. I think it's their fourth year coming up this year, so that's a time when I'm probably going to be in the East Coast, would be in the springtime, Hopefully this year, but if not, maybe next year. Cemetery Chic asks, If you could go anywhere in the world, where would it be and why? Your makeup is always killing it. Oh, <laughs> thank you. Oh man, that's so rad to hear. Oh, you guys' compliments, I tell you. Seriously? England. Ugh. The UK. Anywhere. Anywhere in the UK. I just kind of want to do like a tour of the UK. It would just be right up my alley with like bricks everywhere, broken down streets, old, old, old stuff. I love history so much and I just think England would be a really good place to start. So that is just one of my most wanted places to go. A lot of my favorite YouTubers are from England. Exo Vicious Malicious asks, how old are you? As of January 14th, I turned 26 and so far, I know it's only been like a couple weeks, but so far, I feel like 26 is my best year yet. I'm gonna knock on wood. Where's some wood? Because I'm paranoid as crap. It's just been fantastic. Casey Ray asks, is there a difference in the US and Canadian punk scenes between the music or the culture or anything like that? I would have to say it doesn't vary too much. They're very similar cultures. Everything is pretty much straight across the same in my personal opinion. I feel like we're all kind of gathering that inspiration from the same things that happened 20, 30 years ago. So I feel like overall punk hasn't really changed much since the 70s and it's just kind of flowing and ever gaining tons and tons of new people. I find that the only times that I've ever gone to the States was for big festivals. So I feel like everybody's kind of, you know, on their best behavior or the most decked they've ever been. So I feel like I kind of got a less personal view of the States punk scene just because everybody's really just rip raw and ready to go. So I feel like it would be kind of cool to adventure more into the States and go to more smaller local shows and just kind of like really soak in the scene and understand it. As far as Canada goes, it's kind of dramatic. The States could be like this too, but <laughs> there's something about it when an entire group of people are like misfits, throwaways, you know, just thrown all together in this one subculture and we're all so freaking different and it just kind of creates a little bit of animosity between people. I have seen a lot of drama over the years and it just kind of gets to a point where it's like can we not all just remember that we're all f ups? Can we just, can we just 
remember that none of us are perfect. The reason that we all gravitated towards punk was because we were outcasts, was because we weren't perfect. We weren't just that everyday, normal kid in school. We weren't the jocks and we weren't the nerds. We were just kind of a big mishmash of everything. So I just feel like I as far as my opinion goes on the Canadian punk scene, it's give and take. Overall, I feel like a lot of places deal with these kind of things though, so it's not just Canadians that get dramatic, I'm sure. As far as the music goes though, I think across the board it's pretty similar, all inspired by the same stuff. Savannah Marie Lennon asks, if you could collab with Kat Von D to do a beauty product or a collection, what would it be? Ah, girl. <laughs> Don't you dare get my hopes up like that. For real though, that you just know. You just know exactly who I would be the most comfortable with creating a collection with. I love it. I love that you just know. <laughs> if that was a possibility, I think it would be really cool to touch base on the punk stuff. On like, 77 punk. Are you even surprised? Specifically, the women of punk. Because I feel like they're a little bit undermined every now and again. I feel like she's hit a lot of subcultures right on the head, you know? She had like the pastel goth and a lot of her stuff is very gothic. But I think it would be cool to go a little bit deeper, a little bit further into history with punk and not just stop it, you know, Green Day. She's also coming out with collections with drag queens. I just think she's so progressive and her brand is just so ready for punk. You know what I mean? I just, I feel it in my bones. I think it would be just so cool to finally have that representation, especially in makeup, because when you look back throughout the history, women of punk have always had such bold and out there makeup, especially for the times that they were in. You gotta think about the history and where life was in these times and think about these girls and, and, and now maybe it might be just like a passing thing and people do still look at you funny when you wear weird makeup, but back in the day it used to be something else, you know? You would be really, really pushed away and you would be really, really frowned upon and people would say just awful things about you back then. So I feel like the girls had a lot of guts and I think it would just be so, so beyond awesome. But I think it would be a really cool challenge and I'd be totally down for it. Poetess, Poetess, Poetess 101 asks, have you ever been camera shy as a kid and has YouTube helped you in any way? Honestly, this is a fantastic question and it is such a great one to close out this video with because no, no I was never camera shy as a child. I was actually raised with cameras. So I do have a lot of old VHSs that were created by my grandma, by my dad. They were constantly carrying around those huge cameras that you like basically had to like hold on your shoulder. We have tons of family videos. Basically, if something was going on in our lives, I always had a camera right in my face. My dad and my grandma really instilled that in me. And I think that's why YouTube is something that I can do decently anyways, or something that I find passion in, is because it's something that runs in my blood. It's something that I basically grew up with, was creating videos, which I think is such a cool segue into my next video coming up. I have a wonderful, old, old VHS tape that I would love to show with you guys. Let me know in the comments if you're interested. It is a little bit more intimate into my life, but it is my first video I ever made. So I think that'd be kind of interesting and a little bit different than everybody else's first video they ever made because I was like this big. If you made it this far, I love you. I think you are fantastic. You are such a great supporter of mine. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. I know this one is a little bit long. A lot of my answers are really drawn out, I know. But, gotta get a point across, right? Thank you guys so much for watching. It means the world. So, until my next video, guys, I will talk to you guys soon.